What is up, my gaggle of geeks? I am here with director John Patton Ford from Emily the Criminal that is out at Sundance right now. If you haven't, you definitely need to be checking out this movie. We have a lot to be talking about. Starring Aubrey Plaza. John, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you, man. Happy to well, be here. I, first, I wanted to ask, like, with this film, the premise itself, it it's kind of the same situation where, like, there's a character that finds out about this world and is actually like good at what they're doing inside this world. But you can see that in the, in a sense with like, I don't know, um, Nightcrawler that like TV would work well with that. But where, did, where did you come up with the idea for credit card scamming? Like what were you researching that made you inspired to, to do a story like this? I'll tell you exactly where I moved to LA and I lived in um, a neighborhood in Los Feliz. If you're familiar Mm. And uh, there was a lot of fishy stuff going on in the neighborhood, or at least it seemed that way. Uh, you know, my dad was in the FBI and I grew up kind of hearing about his experiences with organized crime. So I knew a little bit of what to look for. And sure enough, about two years later, there was this massive FBI bust uh, of this mafia organization that I, I'm afraid to say out loud because it's going to bring a whole. <laughs> weird... no, we yeah, so you, almost don't, you don't you don't know. But anyway. I read all, you know, I got horribly curious, like, wow, there's like this massive international crime ring in my neighborhood. And I read all about them once the bust happened. And one of the things they did was credit card fraud in a very organized, regimented kind of way, um, mm -hmm. very similar to what you see in the movie. So that's how I, that's how I got interested. The premise is interesting, but it's also the way that you tell this story. And, uh, and casting Aubrey Plaza, I think, was pretty inspired i think she's incredible in her role what was it like approaching this to her and um what were some of like the challenges i guess before going into it that maybe you two were discussing i wrote the script uh not for her i wasn't imagining anybody i just wrote mm. it and uh <clears throat> then i gave it to someone and that person happened to be that person happened to be like already working with aubrey on something else and he said, uh, I think she did it. Let me give it to her. And I was confused. I was like, what? Aubrey Plaza? Really? Why? I just thought she was a comedian. And that's sort of on me. I wasn't, I wasn't like in the know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also didn't, I could never imagine that she'd want to do something like this. Uh, but she read it really quickly and immediately reached out and was like, hey, I want to meet. And I was like, wow. Okay. And so I like met Aubrey Plaza <laughs> in this coffee shop and was horribly intimidated. But then she started talking and I started asking her about her life. And immediately I saw like, oh, this person, this is like a whole human being. You know, I don't know what I was expecting, but this person is so much more dimensional and has so many more details than I thought. Wouldn't it be interesting to give her a role that kind of opens that up a bit more? Mm -hmm. That's exciting. In terms of the challenges we're dealing with, I mean, like, man, <laughs> ever, everything, name a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she produced it. So. Okay that moment Great. where I was talking about where I met her for the first time. I mean, really it was just me, her and a script. I mean, nothing mm -hmm. else. And she was integral in helping to get it made. When did you guys meet? Was it pre 2020? Was it just yeah. before? So we met, uh, I think in the summer of 2018. Oh, wow. So it has been quite a while. It's been a bit. Yeah. And we had the money in 2020. and just couldn't go because of, because of COVID. Mm hmm. Were you doing any filming and stuff during 2020 or did you get all of that stuff wrapped up beforehand just doing post? Uh, no, I mean, we filmed in August of this past year, 2021. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So we just, I just finished the movie nine days ago. So are, are you serious? Whoa. Serious. Like I'm not <laughs> finished. I mean, like finished, like I was like editing nine days ago. <laughs> it's so tight of a story. And honestly, one of the one of the key points that I loved the most about it was the edit was the editing. So, yeah, con congrats on that. That's amazing. Um, Credit to this guy named Harrison Atkins who edited the movie. Oh, Harrison Atkins, awesome. So one with uh, COVID and and filming with there, was there anything as far as like like what, was there a lockdown that you had to kind of endure during that, or was it pretty easy going? Where were you filming in? I'm filming in L.A. Yeah, we filmed in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, kind of everywhere. We shot a bunch in Culver City. We shot a bunch downtown, um, a little bit south of downtown. We were way out in the valley in Panorama City for a day. Um, we were in Nayarit in Mexico and Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> or, or something shot in 20 days. It has the, the kind of breadth and scope of something much more complicated, for sure. Mm -hmm. When did... Uh... Theo Rossi come on board and what was it like uh, working with him on this too? 
Theo came on really late. Um, full disclosure, we, we had cast someone and then it didn't quite work out with that person. And we needed somebody. This was, I think, around two weeks before production started, maybe a little less than two weeks. And we were just horribly hard up for someone. I mean, we needed someone who could speak Arabic, who had a Middle Eastern background, who was right for the role, who was available, who'd vibe with Aubrey. I mean, all these boxes seemed impossible to check. During COVID, can't fly anyone in from out of the country because we can't get a visa. Uh, and magically, Theo just came out of thin air and was perfect. What was it like working with him? He is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Theo is like a working professional. He just knows how to do it. He shows up completely prepared. Um, he's really focused. He's really kind of like laser guided. Like he just figures out how he's going to do it and then just executes. And he's really consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, just in editing, there's just no bad takes. You just got like, he's just so consistent and so such a pro. And I They're, feel like they both are so, so unique as far as actors go. I, I remember watching him in Luke Cage and just not being able to take my eyes off the screen in any scene he was in. And I had the same exact feeling with this. And, and both of them working together, that, that chemistry was really palpable. Was that something that happened instantaneously or did it take kind of going through the story a little bit together to figure that out? No, it wasn't instantaneous. I, I was worried, man. <laughs> I've never seen them together. Uh, again, because of COVID, I wasn't able to do what we call chemistry reads, which is when you get two actors together in a room and you kind of see how they vibe. Mm -hmm. I just cast them totally separately. And then like a couple days before we shot, I finally got them in a room together. It was awkward, to be honest with you. It was really awkward. And I was like, oh, God, this isn't going to work at all. Um, and it was through filming and through them getting to know each other a bit better that this kind of unlikely vibe started to started to take place they both kind of harass each other a little bit and give each other a hard <laughs> time and they're both so different and come from such different worlds that there's just this natural kind of like hostile competitiveness between them that i think shows a little bit on screen as far as film influences i know you have the premise of this because you know you were seeing sketchy things happening but what what made you kind of go for the aesthetic that you chose like i mentioned before it felt a little bit uh like inspired in some ways by nightcrawler at least the one of the more earlier ones what else uh, did you see as a film inspiration for this I could talk all day about that <laughs> uh there's a french director named jacques odiard who's one mm -hmm. of my favorites made a movie called The Beat That My Heart Skipped, and then later A Prophet, which is what most people know him from. Um, he's uh, kind of a stalwart of just contemporary French cinema. He's got a really, really specific way of shooting with a handheld camera. And for me and my DP, we would just think, all right, well, if he, like, if Odiard were in LA, what kind of movie would he make? What would it look like? That was how it kicked off. But then when we were shooting, what naturally happened, we discovered is that any, like, crime movie that you shoot in LA that takes place at night just eventually starts to look like a Michael Mann movie no matter what you do <laughs> because that's what LA looks like it starts to look mm. like heat after a while or it starts to look like you know Drive or Nightcrawler and the other classics um, Thief so mm. and we just kind of leaned into that when it started naturally happening I, I think it's because of locations you get to locations in LA and they just want to be filmed in a certain way mm. there's a fluorescent grossness to it that's just <laughs> it's there you know what of the of the 20 days that you had shooting this, what was the most stressful day that you were working on? Was it wrapping it up towards the end, like just getting it out before Sundance? Was it? Yeah. You um, had so many moments like to have like, a oh, crap, what's going on? Oh God, you think it would be the car chase. There's a car chase in this movie that mm. we shot in like four hours. You think oh, it would be that. Um, but no, that was actually a blast. That was that was great. The the most stressful time, you know, there's a scene um, in the movie where she goes to a department store and buys a TV in the very beginning. Mm. And it was probably that day. Um, really? You'd think that would be easy. But uh, that day we had to shoot everything interior in the department store and then everything exterior that took place in the parking lot. And there was a lot of crowd control. We had a ton of extras and we just did not have the manpower and the crew to coordinate those extras and make them move in ways that are believable. And it just turned into like me and the AD and like whoever else we could get just like trying to anything with lots of extras was the worst. And mm -hmm. that day I lost my mind. That was the only day that I, I temporarily like blacked out and lost it. You know, This film was incredible. And really even hearing the behind the scenes about how, how quickly this was put together, it really just makes 
makes me feel like there's way way more credit to you and credit to you for honestly making it so that it was a good environment for for your actors to be able to have a chemistry and a relationship especially in such a short amount of time that's a strong testament to you as being a director to have your your people feel comfortable around you as well i appreciate that i got to credit someone named jeff bierman who's our cinematographer i don't know mm -hmm. if there's anyone else on the planet who could have pulled off what he pulled off the amount of coverage he got the amount of takes he got in no time he's an absolute scientist uh and then our production designer liz tunkel dude there's 60 locations in this movie there's something like 40 some odd different spaces she had to build with no money and no time like the scene where emily goes and buys a car from those guys she it was like three hours and she did all that, all that, all the crap in there. Mm -hmm. It's just an absolute magic trick. And then you can credit me all you want, but it's, it was really <laughs> <dumb>. <laughs> Hey, And well, it, it definitely takes a village in, in these instances, but it, it it, the people wanting to be involved and wanting to make a great movie it all comes from the top. So uh, I want to thank you again for coming on and talking to me a little bit about it. Please everyone check out Emily, the criminal. This was John Patton for Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Have a good night.